Hey guys, Dr. Duffin Lim, board certified laser dermatologist. Today we'll be talking and reviewing Meloderm. Meloderm or Melacream or Melarase, I guess a play of words, yeah? So I'll review this in regards to um, how good it is, what it's used for, um, and price and subject to feel. And right at the end, I'll give it a DAP score. So let's talk about Melacream or in this situation, Meloderm. Meloderm has been with us for um, nearly 20 years, yeah? It's been manufactured by a company called Savat and um, it's a very well-known cream. Now, Meloderm itself has been marketed for mainly pigment. So we're talking about conditions such as cholesma, which is melesma, freckles, lentigos or sun damage, together with things like PIH, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation from acne, as well as genetic uh, conditions, for example, um, dark circles around the eyes and around the neck area. All of these conditions have a specific diagnosis. In fact, um, Meloderm is only good, well, we say only good, it's purposely good for things like post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation as well as uh, melasma. And let's go through actually what this contains and why, I guess, um, we have it, yeah? So, just as a background, the most potent, I guess, um, skin brightening agent, yeah? We actually know that's called hydroquinone. Hydroquinone is, in Australia at least, it's a prescription for any concentrations above 2%. It's regulated, tightly regulated in many parts of the world, including Southeast Asia, Japan, um, as well as um, African countries. Reason being is that hydroquinone uh, can, can have side effects if it's used, number one, if it's too high a concentration, or number two, if it's used for a long period of time. It can cause what's known as ochronosis, which is paradoxical um, darkening of the skin. Uh, additionally, it can cause what's known as tachyphylaxis, which means when you start using uh, hydroquinone, if it works well, what happens is that over time, uh, your tolerance builds up, which means you have to use more and more often, and that's not a good thing. So guys, let us go through what Meloderm is, what it contains, and how it can help your skin. So first of all, it contains uh, vitamin A, which is retinol. So retinol actually works by, number one, increasing the turnover of your skin, yeah? And that can decrease pigmentation. Number two, it can actually decrease um, pigmentation by inhibiting tyrosinase. The other vitamin it contains is vitamin B3 or niacinamide, and that works as an anti-inflammatory. So for certain skin conditions, for example, acne, um, it can actually decrease inflammation and hence can reduce the amount of skin color changes. In, in the case of acne, it's either red, which is post-inflammatory erythema, or brown, which is post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So when it comes to actives, vitamin A, vitamin B, and last of all, it contains tocopherol, which is vitamin E. Vitamin E works as a free radical scavenger. So things like UV lights, pollutants, um, all of those which actually can make your skin pigmented, vitamin E can scavenge that up. So it contains vitamin A, vitamin uh, E, and also vitamin B3. So what else is in this formulation? Supposedly there are 10 active ingredients. So uh, it also contains alpha hydroxy acids. In this situation, it contains uh, both lactic acid as well as citric acid. They don't tell us the actual concentrations, but nevertheless it contains AHAs. And AHAs works in the context of pigmentation as an exfoliating agent. Now, the other super good thing with this, in context of, um, I guess, safety, is that it contains botanicals. So botanicals such as um, mulberry root, it also contains bearberry, and it also contains licorice. So those three, uh, actually can inhibit pigmentation. So there's not many scientific-based double-blinded studies, but there are a few publications which show that botanicals um, has advantages, especially when it comes to pigmentation. So guys, that's how uh, Meloderm or Melacrim or Melarase works. Um, not as good as hydroquinone, but far, far safer. So how do I employ this um, in my practice? So. When I'm seeing patients with melasma, cholesma, or um, skin pigmentation for other causes, now there's an active depigmenting phase, and that includes things like lasers, um, certain tablets like transexamic acid, uh, topicals including hydroquinone, uh, as well as, uh, for example, ascorbic acid and kochic acid. So once we've had a good improvement with that, which is a depigmenting phase, we need to pay, place the patients on what we call the maintenance phase. And this is where, I guess, um, Creams like Meloderm, Melorace, Melocream comes in handy. It's not as good as actually depigmenting, but this can help uh, reduce rebound. This is how I actually incorporate things in my practice, especially as a laser dermatologist. So, 
What other things can, um, can, can we do in regards to pigmentation? We talked about uh, uh, hydroquinone. The most important, as you know, it is sunscreen. Yeah? So using a sunscreen two to three times a day together with broad hats and photo protection actually forms the cornerstone of all depigmenting uh, treatments. So guys, um, other things we can use, yeah? So if you don't have access to, to this, which is pretty rare because you can buy this on the internet. In fact, it's more accessible than getting a compounded script from a dermatologist. So the disadvantage for, for I guess, having compounded scripts is number one, availability to dermatologists. Number two, I guess, um, the rate limiting factor, I guess, is, is the ability of your dermatologist to actually write compounded scripts for you. Uh, compounding is actually, you know, it's a lost art because every year that goes by, these old formulations which have been developed for the last you know, 20, 30 years, even longer, 50 years, um, by dermatologists, uh, much more senior than I, uh, basically they get lost in the system and as a result, more commercially available creams um, are, are present. Guys, so it's a much of a muchness sometimes, but in some situations a compounded cream is far more advantageous than buying something like this um, over the counter. Okay, so let's give this uh, a DAV score, let's rate it. First of all, uh, skin signs, I rate it as 3 out of 10. The reason being is that when you're looking at skin signs, certainly the well-proven aspects, for example, the use of uh, retinol, the use of uh, niacinamide, many papers, scientific papers, so I, I won't argue with that fact yet. Yeah? The only downside, I guess, is when it comes to the botanicals, so things like uh, licorice, uh, mulberry root, and, and um, bearberry, yeah? So with those, uh, there are uh, articles out there, but most of them are actually done by the company. So it's not really a peer-reviewed, nor is it a placebo control, nor a double-blind study. So that's why I've rated it 3 out of 5. Now, uh, ease of use. Once again, 3 out of 5. The reason being is that when you actually read the product information, they go on about, um, I guess, skin sensitivities um, and should not be taken in pregnancy. That's because of a retinal warning. Um, and also uh, irritation, yeah. So, like always, uh, you start small area first, and then if you can tolerate that, the increase is tolerated. So, when it comes to ease of use, it's not the easiest cream to use. It's not like using a moisturizer or using sunscreen. You actually have to think about things, yeah? And next case, or next situation, is compatibility. For compatibility, I've given this a three out of five as well. The reason being is that because it contains actives, like I was saying with the retinol, with the um, alpha hydroxy acid, it can potentially cause irritation. So once again, start slow, go up from there. If you want to incorporate this in your skincare regime or skincare routine, start, for example, every second night and increase is tolerated. Do a test patch first and certainly for areas around your eyes, for example, be very, very uh, cautious with um, uh, extreme use, yeah? So remember, go slow, slow in, fast out, okay? Now, let's talk about other factors. So when it comes to, I guess, uh, subject to feel, yeah? Um, I, I've been giving a lot of threes lately, yeah? So it's actually a three out of five. The reason being is that personally, so once again, subjective, yeah? Personally, I feel it's a little bit sticky um, when I apply it, even for the next, you know, half an hour, one hour, I still feel a little bit tacky there. Um, the other thing is, well, even though it's got no added fragrances, um, it actually smells a, a little bit off, yeah? So not, well, once again, subjective, yeah? It, it's, uh, the smell, however, unlike some creams where it dissipates within 60 seconds, this still lingers at about five minute mark. So once again, um, subjectivity, three out of five. Uh, when it comes to packaging, uh, once again, it's a three out of five. The reason being is, is, and you'll see it later, is because it comes as a pump pack. So a pump pack has advantages. Number one, uh, it's sealed, I guess, from the outside environment, like the air and sunlight. And that's very important when you're using uh, anti-pigment creams, yeah, because they can get oxidized. So the downside about using a pump pack is that you waste anywhere between 5 to 8 percent of your product in that little pump pack and because this is a 50 ml um, preparation you know you're literally wasting between 5 to you know 7 uh, mils or 5 to 7 grams of product down the base of the actual um, preparation itself so once again um, packaging it's nice but it's three out of five finally price um, Price, it is up there. So you're looking at um, $49.99 uh, US dollars, yeah, which when you translate to Australian dollars, it's over $80, yeah, for, for something like this, which is 50 mils. Um, it's kind of pricey because usually, if you're going to, I guess, line up another product with this, for example, compounded um, 
prescriptions for hydroquinone. Remember, when someone does compounded prescriptions, basically compounding it to your skin type, or your sensitivities, or your condition. And that usually costs anywhere between $60 to $90 as well. So basically for a compounded cream, um, written by a dermatologist and made by a uh, pharmacist, you're paying very similar compared to um, over-the-counter or, or generic cream such as uh, uh, Meloderm, Melorase, Melocream. So guys, uh, when I add all that up, it's 17 out of 30. <laughs> so, like I said, it, it's, um, it's not that I don't like it, it's not that it's useless. It's just that um, there are other agents to use which may be more beneficial for you. And you've heard my spiel on how I incorporate this in a um, depigmenting regime. Guys, I hope you liked that video. Um, it's a in-depth video on the use of uh, depigmenting agents apart from hydroquinone. I can go later on into specifics, uh, things like, uh, like I said, you know, ascorbic acid and then mixes with uh, kojic acid and uh, licorice and go into the actual percentages. I'll do that at some other time. Uh, guys, I hope you liked the video. Please comment, like, share. If you use Meloderm, Melorase, Melocream, Tell us how you like it, uh, advantages, disadvantages, and please comment. I'll see you same time, same place next week. Bye for now.